Well, good evening, folks. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time for Dr. News. News from in and around the universe that may or may not come a lot more slowly over the next coming months. And like I've warned folks, you know, it's not going to be like when the show's on that, you know, I used to try to do daily news reports, but the problem is after a while, it starts to burn you out. You end up spending all day trying to find stuff that's relevant to report. And there's really not much going on. So what I do is during the off season, I let things build up a little bit. And then I go, you know, forward. I'm sorry, that's somebody remarking to something every couple of days. So that way you get the most relevant stuff all together and you don't have to keep going through little mini videos to get it. Um, someone mentioned recently that I should script my videos. Otherwise, I don't say, oh, so much. Well, for one, I watched the video this person was looking at. I never once said, um, and I, I still know what the hell she got that from. I do do it. I'm not going to say I don't, but that particular video, I didn't really say, um, all that much. But apparently they offended this person. All I can say is this. The day I start scripting videos, the day I'll put on a curly haired wig, I'll put on, I'll get myself a nice big fat HD camera. I'll set up a studio in here with studio lighting and I'll sit here and feed you bullshit. Just like all the other cookie cutter channels do. Because if I start doing scripted videos, there goes the spontaneity. There goes the, all the, you know, imagination. It just becomes cookie cutter, just like all the other fan service videos you get. And to me, it's like, it would just be like selling out if I started doing scripted videos. So it's never going to happen. Very sorry. If you don't like the way I do videos, the door is right there. Don't let it hit you on the ass on the way out. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be your friend and say, I'm going to totally change my act, you know, totally change you know, the person I am just to make you happy. Because if I start doing that, the next thing you know, I'll be, well, I've already described, hi, I'm Brian. I'm, I know half the shit I say is not accurate, but guess what? Uh, there's going to be a giveaway. Oh, gosh. I just can't do it. Okay, let's get into the stuff that's important. Let's get in right into it. And here we go. Okay, 2017 Christmas special, 2017 star makes shocking confession about the new Time Lord. For one... It's not a star. It's director Rachel Talay, or Talalay, however which, you know, way you want to pronounce it. Oops, sorry. Um, but one of the things he put, she put out there that really got people going was this tweet. And this is right here is the heart of the matter. To answer general questions, no trip to San Diego Comic-Con for me this year, no knowledge of 13, no idea about Series 11, reading some books, any recommendations? Now, as some of you may have already heard, Word is going around that when they wrapped filming on Monday, and no, we will not talk about the DWSR debacle because it would piss me off to the point I would lose track of my thought and I'd really go off on a wild rant because that has been one of the stupidest escapades I've ever seen. Oh, well, that's a whole other thing. But this is feeding right into a story I've heard that apparently that the new guy is not going to film his bit for the Christmas special until sometime in the next month. Now, as you all know, Peter Capaldi's last day of filming was the 10th. Sorry, they wrapped the day early. Shit happens. We have to move on. And I know it's sad some of you missed it, but, you know, what can you do? They wrapped the day early. They came out on their own volition. No guns were held to anyone's heads. There was no top seeker conspiracy. There was no MI5 involved, and ninjas were definitely not on the walls. Okay, but let's get back to this story. <laughs> See what I mean? It makes me go on a rant. All right. See, that's not scripted. All right. Rachel Talay has basically admitted that they have, you know, so I got like I said, I think it was Colt Box actually put out an article saying the new doctor has already filmed this scenes. No, he hasn't because Rachel Talay just told you right there. She has no knowledge of 13. And if the, she had been on set when 13 came on and Chibnall had come on for his stuff, she would have been right there and said, okay, I might know who this is, blah, blah, blah. And also, Chibnall was nowhere in sight on the 10th, if you didn't notice. Which means him and his new star are probably not going to come in until next month. <clears throat> Great, now my throat's drying out and I got nothing to drink. Until next month when, you know, they decide to sneak in when the heat's off and then they're going to film the ending. Okay, so that's exactly what's going to happen, I think. And that, yeah, this way they can keep the announcement off indefinitely. So... I know that's the way it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And I think that's what they're going to do. And it said, it's, you know, I was hoping they're going to announce it. Someone was hoping they're going to announce it for the Wimbledon or tennis tournament this weekend. Um, so I was really hoping they're going to hold off till San Diego comic-con. That's another rumor that's drifting around, 
But like I said, we've got to be patient. Hang on. Okay, we will find out sometime soon because they can't keep it under the wraps forever. Moving on. Classic Dons. Look, classic Dons. Classic Dons of Italian gangster families. Oh, no, no, no. Classic Doctors Meet New Monsters in the new Doctor Who box set. And this is volume two of that series. Um, they're going to be starting off with Night of the Vashta Narada, which is going to put the fourth Doctor up against them. You remember them guys from Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead. Those nifty little buggers that hung around in the shadows. Empire of the Rachnos. Of course, you remember Rachnos from all the way back when the Doctor met Donna all the way back in uh, Runaway Bride. Car Carrionite Curse, of course, refers back to the Carrionites from Shakespeare's Code. And they're going to be going up against uh, say, right. Sorry about Empire of the Rachnos is going up against – oh, great. I lost my train of thought. All right, this is fourth. Okay, Empire of the Rachnos is fifth. Carrionite Curse is going up against the sixth. And Day of the Vashna Narada, where they come back again, is going up against Paul McGann, the eighth doctor. So, see what I mean? You wouldn't have all this colorful stuff if I scripted my videos. And if you want to pre-order it from Big Finish or whatever, get it right here. The Mavell and Grave is also out. Um, that's an interesting one. I haven't had a chance to sit down and quite listen to it yet, but I'm hearing good things. The High Price of Parking is also out. I haven't had a chance to listen to it. And Flashpoint, I believe, was just released as well as Torchwood, The Office, and Never Was. So once again, if you want to order these, boom, 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 here's leaks to each one of them right here. Once again, I cannot recommend Big Finish enough, especially if you're a classic fan, because this way you get to go on further adventures with the classic Doctors, and this time they're facing up monsters that have appeared in the new series. All right, Doctor Who failed to give Pot Bill Potts the conclusion she deserved. Holy nanty knocking crazed. Crazy stuff here. Now, the only thing I agreed on in this entire article was, you know, the whole Bill resurrection thing, which, by the way, echoed, as I said, Clara's resurrection by a shoulder last season. But the problem is Clara wasn't resurrected by a shoulder. So I don't know. That kind of makes me go crazy right there. She wasn't. It was the doctor's fault she got yanked out of time. So... I don't know what they're trying to do here. Maybe they should have done a little more research, but I didn't agree with the last minute resurrection thing. Like I said, without death, there can't not be tension. There cannot be suspense. Therefore there cannot be proper drama. And it just, it got to be stupid after a while. It was like, no matter what situation you stick them, they're going to be living at the end, you know? So it's kind of like playing the lottery and you already know the numbers. You know? And again, that would be fantastic. But okay. Doctor ratings carry for the last series were the lowest since it returned in TV 2005, as my friend Graham would say, the bloody Irish. Okay. Um, the thing is, is this. We have to remember that ever since 2005, online streaming has become more and more readily available, and, because, and there's been more and more services to stream in programs and or pick them up online, and or view them in a way other than watching them on the television as broadcast, such as DVRs and that whole nine yards. So why they're calling this out and saying, the show's failing, it's going to die, it's all for such and such as fault. And I, only in recent years have audiences started to fall. Yeah, that's why Doctor Who was the most watched program on the BBC for I don't know how many weeks. I'll have to go back and double check this over the Series 10. And yet, you know, everybody's numbers were down. Yet they don't freaking mention this in this article that everybody's numbers are down. You see what I mean? It's all doom and gloom. It's all the show's going to get canceled. Okay, moving on. Matter of fact, let's go to the Series 10 audience reaction. I am not going to sit here and go through this whole thing and try to explain it to you. But there's some real nifty graphs here if you want to look at them. As a matter of fact, the, the, the key demographic a lot of full, you know, channels look for is 16 to 34 or just between 16 and 49 in general. But you'll notice how much the 16 to 34 raised towards the end of the series. That means you're hooking in younger fans, and that's what they wanted. That's what you always want. You want them to come back for more. You want younger fans coming in. But meanwhile, older fans just didn't get it. And again, I've been accused of not getting it many, many times. So I don't know. Like I said, there were some things I did disagree with it, but at the same time, you know, 
Okay, considering that the lowest AI of the whole thing was 81, I think. And World Enough and Time came in at 85, if I remember correctly. So this kind of helps explain where they get the appreciation numbers, as well as shows you what directions they were going, which age group and whatnot. So that's why I'm going to include this here. It's a good read. It helps you know, give you an insight into what's actually going on. And no, this show is not bombing, for crying out loud. Okay, Robotech, or yeah, sorry, this is some loot that's going to be coming to the San Diego Comic-Con 2017. Now, the reason why I was about to say this is because Rubber Toe Replicas, I saw that and it made me flick, think of it, has actually come out with a reproduction of the fourth Doctor Sonic Screwdriver, and it's looking mighty good. So if you want to check out some of this possible Doctor Who stuff, here it is right here for you over on Blog or Who. Moving on, San Diego Comic-Con. Titan Comics creators are going to attend the Doctor and Torchwood panel sign and signings. So... So writers Nick B, uh, sorry Nick Abadzis, sorry Richard Dinnick, George Mann, Brian Miller, Kevin Scott, and Doctor Editor Andrew James will all be in attendance for the reveal of upcoming plans for Titans, Doctor Who, and Torchwood comics. They will take you behind the scenes with exclusive art previews from online. This panel will take place on Saturday the twenty second at three thirty p.m. in Room Five A B. Like any of us are going to be there. Well, I know some of you out there will be. But it's just to me, you know flight for a con you know paying out thousands of dollars you know, if i pay out a thousand dollars for a con i feel guilty but come on thousands of dollars just to go somewhere so you can go oh i was there oh new editor for doctor magazine that's right tom spilsbury the long-standing editor of doctor magazine is leaving the magazine after 10 years and the helm will be replaced by marcus hurt so if you're into that and want to find out what's going on with that, boom, 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 here it is. Moving on on The Guardian. So, and I love this. We haven't put up a paywall. We just want you to give us your money. Oh, by the way, we want to bog down your system with malware and all that with all these freaking advertisements. So please turn off your ad blocker. Go to hell. Oh, sorry, I hate to be a bastard, but you wouldn't believe how slow even you know, this system will run if I turn that ad blocker off. Okay, Doctor Who and the Key to Deep Time. And this is a really amusing article that goes into some of the things that have been established in Who history versus real history and whatnot. And I just found it a very entertaining read, so that's why I'm kind of including it here. Okay, crowdfunded film telling history of the Daleks put on hold because of copyright issues. Does this sound familiar to anyone? But... So filmmaker Victor Lewis Smith is understood to have temporarily show, show plans for the Doctor Who film. Now, they never say the name in here, but my money's on Terry Nation Estate. All right, moving on. Retro TV ads add more classic serials, and this just literally popped up a few minutes ago, so I haven't really had a chance to read this. But Okay, America's home to the most complete library of Doctor Who available on broadcast television has acquired rights, more serials, from the classic era to add to its repertoire. Now, get ready for this. Now, they've been talking about that reconstruction of the wheel in space, that one thing they're going to show at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, and words reaching me from a very reliable source, tell us snaps. Really? You can go online and watch the tell us snaps version of wheel in space right now. Telesnaps, you better not tell me the BBC sank a shitload of money into making a better Telesnap. So I'm still hoping for animation on that for the web of, uh, the, sorry, the wheel in space, not the web of here. Very sorry. Well, folks, that's all I got for you. That's all I got for tonight. Like I said, I don't want to go into the whole DWSR thing because it's gotten ridiculous. It's gotten to the, just down the name calling, slandering, complete liable by a, a genius over on fan sided. Who, by the way, when the punches start throwing, I'm going to make sure your article gets published. So that way, you know, you'll know where the source of the real hate came from. That's all I can say. So good night. Take care. Have a good one.